Hello, in this video I'm going to cover the RDS Blueprint with Boaz Pro, and I'm going to specifically cover Postgres. So we can use this RDS Blueprint, and this is essentially a CloudFormation template to provision a, a variety of different databases, Postgres, Oracle, down the line. Uh, in this video, again, we're going to configure Postgres. Now the default database here is, oh, and I should point out, if you are looking for, let's say, a RUR database instead of the traditional RDS MySQL database or Postgres here, then you can look at the Aurora Blueprint. Or if you're looking for Aurora Serverless, then there's also a Aurora Serverless Blueprint. All right, so the default database is MySQL, so we're gonna be overriding some of these values. And this is just pointing out that essentially all the properties of the RDS database resource are configurable via parameters. And additionally, uh, properties that require further customization can be configured with variables. So this makes everything pretty uh, configurable and you could kind of configure it for your needs. Storage is encrypted by default. And this is an important point out. If you already have a DB subnet group name, then you can use that. If you don't, you can actually just pass subnet IDs to this parameter, and then that will tell the CloudFormation template to create and manage a DB subnet group for you. Here's another note about uh, being able to also create a pretty endpoint via Route 53, and po that points to the database endpoint just so it's a little prettier and more human friendly versus the random generated endpoint that RDS generates for you. Now, if you're gonna use the Route 53 point to database, I recommend in internal uh, Route 53 records. It is a database after all. The usage here is pretty simple. You add the blueprint to the gem file, you configure some values, the RDS values, then you deploy the blueprint. Here's the add portion, the configure portion, and the deploy portion. I do wanna spend a little more time covering this part right here, compatible parameters and values. Each RDS database engine must have must be given or provided compatible parameters here or compatible properties to the database resource. You can't just pass like a MySQL DB parameter group family to Postgres. That's not going to work. So here is a table that we put together here that kind of shows you all the compatible values that have been kind of tested. You might want to study this table and kind of make sure you have these values and uh, are using these values as a baseline just to get up and running or else the stack will roll back. Okay, that's kind of important. So we're gonna focus on Postgres, so we're gonna be just using these values right here. Here's some notes about using custom VPC. So if you want to, you can launch this in your own VPC. I'm gonna be using the built off reference architecture, which basically uh, has a VPC built up um, with some best practices here. So I'm gonna be using that, but if you don't, you're not using that, that's no big deal. You could just use your own VPC and just plug in your own uh, custom VPC values and your custom DB subnets right there. Uh, I do recommend putting the database into a private data subnet. So that's what we're gonna be using in this demo here. Here is a section covering security groups. If you have a security group, you kind of want to use this existing, then you can go ahead and use that. Otherwise, the CloudFormation template will provision a security group and assign it for you and manage it for you. Here's an additional note about the Route 53 Rec endpoint and how to actually use it. Advanced property customizations. And lastly, oh, here's actually creating replicas too. So that's pretty neat. You could do that too with this. Okay, and then lastly, you could actually configure any of the DB parameter groups and DB option groups via variables. So it's quite configurable and you could essentially codify the entire process here. So you do that with variables. We're gonna be covering just parameters in this video of this demo, but you could easily do that with variables. And here's some examples, at least for the memcache um, <clears throat> option here that you can add onto the MySQL engine. But uh, different databases have different options that you can add on and you have to look into whichever option you want for the, your particular database. We're going to, again, uh, focus on Postgres in this video. There's some considerations with launching a database via um, CloudFormation. I would say that for additional guardrail, uh, set the DB instance identifier just so that you don't accidentally actually replace your database instance. Uh, instead, what will do, what will happen is this provides a guardrail. It'll try to create another database with the same DB instance identifier and we're just immediately we're back, which is the behavior you might want, want might want um, but it depends on what you want me to use it for. Okay, so I've covered the readme now, so let's go ahead and jump into the demo. So here is essentially kind of a Lona project already, and I'm just opening up the gem file, and what I need is I need the line of code to add the blueprint. So it's this line right here. So I'll go ahead and copy that over to here, and you can see if I can expand this out a little bit here, I actually have a helper method here, like blueprint, that makes this look a little prettier. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that instead because I, I think it looks prettier. Okay, now once that's done, you can bundle. 
Then you go uh, Lono, Lono, Lono Blueprints. Then you should be able to see uh, the RDS database here, the uh, RDS Blueprint right there. So now we're ready to configure it. So let's go look at back to the configuration section here. I'm gonna grab both these two commands and configure both the development and production at the same time. So let's run both of those. Development, this is Lono Seed. What Lono Seed does is it evaluates the generated CloudFormation template and essentially builds up a starter uh, config file for you so you don't have to do the work. There you go. So there's the development one and there's the production one. So here's where we kind of have to change all the values here, uh, DB class instance. And this is where, as I mentioned, you might want to study this table and make sure you uh, grab compatible values. Okay, so this is Postgres right here. So we want to change the engine now. Let's go for, for the engine. I'm going to actually just do both at the same time here. <clears throat> and then the engine version. Now remember, these have to be compatible values. So there. Let's delete that a little bit. Okay, uh, password and username, you should put, probably change it, but for this demo, I'm just leave as so. Uh, DB parameter group family. So this one's important change, and this one, uh, what Lono kind of does is actually the C command groups all these parameters because the template was designed this way uh, with kind of the resource that the parameters map to. So these parameters map to the DB instance. These parameters are on right here, mapped to the DB subnet group name. And here's the family uh, DB parameter group and the family property of that. So we gotta go change that one right now. Okay, so Postgres 11 is done. Uh, DB instance class, only certain DB instance types are supported with certain um, RDS databases, but we're fine with the default T3 micro, I believe. Let's check it out. Yep, we got the T3 micro in both of them. Okay, uh, and lastly is license model, which is NA here. So we are good with the, at least those compatible values there on the table from the table. But I do want to double check a couple things here because DB subnet group, we actually haven't set this properly yet. So let's go and take a look at this. It says must set DB subnet group name or subnet IDs. So you guys set one of those. So I'm just going to go set the DB subnet group and I'm using a VPC. That's the reference architecture of VPC. So I'm just going to go grab it and the outputs here. And it actually has provided it right here in private DB subnet group name. So this is development that I'm grabbing for. So that will take care of development. And immediately I'm gonna go down here and make this a string because you either set this DB subnet group, sub DB subnet group name or the subnet IDs where then it will create a managed uh, DB subnet group for you. So now I'm gonna switch over the production account here. You know what, while I'm here, I'm actually just grab the VPC. Let's grab the VPC for dev2. Because down here you need VPC and that's the last required parameter here. Okay, so now I can focus all on the production side. And grab VPC here, outputs here. The private DB subnet group name. And the production value here. Get rid of this example. That's the example right there. And then finally grab this. Okay. <clears throat> so that looks good. I'm just gonna double check everything. Uh, oops, good thing I double checked because look, I missed that one, right? So that one looks good. That looks good to me. Looks good. Let's check development now. Looks good. Looks good. Looks good. Okay, so now that we've configured all the parameters, um, I'll just show you the variables real quickly, but we're not gonna really be configuring the variables here. So you can actually go in here and set variables and they will uh, affect uh, the template uh, at compile time. And that's something you have to kind of do in order to handle basically option groups. Um, so you can set those up too, if you need to one codify that process and essentially make sure your database are consistent across uh, environments, production, development, so with that being done, I think we're ready to deploy. So let's go and grab both, both these commands. I'm gonna grab the top one with a no wait option, but the second one I'm gonna drop off the no wait option because I want it to pull and wait for uh, the status here. So I'm gonna go here now and just go ahead and paste the first command. That has the no wait option there, so it's just gonna be asynchronously and calling uh, the API and returning immediately. And the second one, I didn't grab the no wait option, so it's gonna actually pull and kind of wait so you can see it's um, polling confirmation and saying create in progress. 
Let's verify that these CloudFormation stacks have, are launching now. So here's the prod account. You can see RDS create in progress. Let's swap, let's switch over to the dev account. We should see a similar stack. Okay, so it is uh, create in progress there too. Sometimes it's useful to check parameters here to, so you can see that, hey, did we check that, you know, set the right uh, engine, engine version? It looks like that is all correct. So that's good. The databases are creating now. RDS databases do take some time to create, usually typically about 10 to 15 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause so you have to wait. Okay, the database finished uh, deploying. So let's go ahead and take a look in the console now. Here is production. If we just refresh this here, it should, um, oh, I guess this is dev. Dev is still going. Production is definitely done. So let's go look at production and then come back and hopefully dev will be finished by then also. So production here is done already. We you know, refresh, you can see that here it says it took uh, nine minutes and uh, so under 10 minutes, that's, that's pretty good. Uh, usually I see between 10 and 15 minutes. You refresh here and you can go look at events. It started at 16.51 and it, uh, yeah, under 10 minutes here, 17.0. <clears throat> Let's check dev. Hopefully it's done by then, but it might still uh, be going. It's still going right there. Uh, it will finish uh, shortly. Let's see, 16.50, uh, <clears throat> then 16.53, create complete. For instance, profile, so it's still creating, let's see, like a resources, still creating the database here. Okay, let's go ahead and just verify the things <clears throat> on production first, and then we'll come back and hopefully dev is uh, complete by then. So here is production. I'm gonna go to RDS console. And you can see the database instance here. Uh, here's the identifier, and you can see it's Postgres, and it's the DB T3. Uh, you can go click on it to kind of review more information here. Uh, there is the VPC. It's using uh, the subnet group that we specify by a parameter, and those that subnet group has these kind of subnets are pre-configured, and then it has kind of more information down here. Okay, so let's go back to dev, and I hope it's done. Let's go click on this database first, and then click dev. Let's see where it's at. Okay, so it says it's available here. And I can see everything here. You can see that it's uh, uh, also Postgres right here. And you can see the class right there. And you can see the DB subnet group. Let's see if CloudFormation has also reported it completed. Yeah, it has reported it completed. Let's see how long that took uh, events. Uh, 50 and it finished, so about 12 minutes. So a little slower, I mean, it just varies. But um, we confirmed basically the production as well as the uh, development RDS database and Postgres uh, has finished uh, creating. And let's just go back to the readme and summarize. So we pretty much um, configured uh, the blueprint. We um, used the lono C command there to configure the values. The most important thing I will say again is this uh, compatible parameters and variables table. Uh, make sure that you're using uh, values that are compatible with each other. And then we just deployed it and we just have to wait there for about 10 minutes for production and 12 minutes for development there to finish the database creation. Uh, but that's pretty much it. So hopefully you found this helpful. Cheers.